Good morning, welcome to CanX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. There was a pretty good sized earthquake in northern Chile last night. It was an 8.2 on the Richter scale. It struck at about 8.46 p.m. local time. News bulletins reached the United States uh, about a minute or two later. It struck about 60 miles west of the city of uh, Inquique. I-N-Q-U-I-C-I-N-Q-U-I-Q-U-E. About 300 prisoners escaped from the northern port city's jail. A tsunami alert was immediately issued. Tens of thousands of people were evacuated as it developed uh, seven-foot waves hit part of the Chilean coastline, uh, as well as uh, areas in Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, and Panama. That alert has now been lifted. Uh, only four people apparently died, uh, two of them from heart attack related causes. Several homes were destroyed, but it appears, it appears that no significant damage has occurred. The area in the north of Chile is a mining center uh, known for copper mines, and in fact uh, was part of the area that was struck by a larger earthquake in 2010. But it seems as if they've dodged a bullet here. Meanwhile, yesterday uh, morning, on the uh, Washington State-Oregon border, a large explosion rocked a liquefied natural gas plant owned by the Williams Companies, which is headquartered in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It caused about 400 people to evacuate uh, from a two-mile radius around the plant. Nobody was killed. However, uh, there are two huge liquefied natural gas tanks there uh, with uh, thousands of uh, gallons of liquefied natural gas in them. Fortunately, uh, the tank that did rupture was only about a third full. The other tank was completely full, and one of the uh, sheriffs said if that huge tank had exploded, it would have been a different story. A relatively small amount of gas did leak from the tank that did uh, explode, but it then evaporated, blowing to the northeast. Of course, in the United States and elsewhere, uh, there is a continuing debate over liquefied natural gas and its combustibility. Interestingly enough, this is a fact that popped out. The state of Washington has 24,000 miles of natural gas and hazardous gas liquid pipelines running underneath it. Washington is uh, not known as a gigantic industrial state. If that's what's there, imagine what's in states such as Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Standard & Poor's has affirmed Cooper Gay Sweat & Crawford's B credit rating but it changed its outlook on the broker from stable to negative and warned of a challenging operating environment for the firm, which has been on an acquisition spree. Um, the negative outlook on the broker reflects a deterioration in its revenues and earnings relative to expectations. Uh, Toby Esser, the group CEO, responded to the move by commenting, we're pleased that Standard & Poor's has decided to retain our credit rating despite the change of outlook to negative from stable. He said Cooper Gay retained strong liquidity alongside our supportive equity partners, significant investment firepower. We uh, trust that Toby will uh, prevail and we wish him well and we're sure that he will. Interestingly enough, there's no new news on the Malaysia Airlines uh, Flight 370, just a continual uh, series of finger pointing going on seemingly in Kuala Lumpur between uh, the Malaysian government and international investigators who cannot speak on the record because they're technically assisting the Malaysian government. However, another Boeing 777 that uh, crashed at San Francisco International Airport operated by the South Korean carrier Asiana, uh, details of that crash have now continued to come to light. The airliner is saying that uh, design issues in the software that operates the automatic pilot were to blame for the crash. They say that uh, the prime cause of the crash, which was that the Asiana crew failed to notice that the plane was flying far too slowly to stay in the air, was caused because of the unexpected disabling of airspeed protection without adequate warning to the flight crew. They said that there is a problem with the software that has been installed on the plane by Boeing. The uh, board's conclusion, this was filed in front of the National Transportation Safety Board, the conclusion of the safety board are not admissible in court. However, the ranking of factors that the board produces often influences how an insurance carriers um, that in this case insured the plane uh, might in fact apportion the damage settlement for any court judgment. So Asiana is getting their two cents in. 
one airline that's also uh, dealing with their two cents of is Lufthansa, which is uh, enduring a crippling pilot strike right now. We reported two weeks ago that the Lufthansa pilots had voted for the authority to strike, and strike they have. Um, they've been uh, suspended service now through April 4th. Only about 500 flights a day are being maintained out of the several thousand. Lufthansa is uh, trying to uh, compete with budget carriers in Europe as well as government-funded companies that uh, operate airlines from the Gulf. And one consultant said Lufthansa can't afford to be left behind in cutting expenses if they want to remain in the top tier. One place that they're looking to cut expenses, of course, is in the pilots' retirement benefits, and the pilots don't like that. <clears throat> Every day now, uh, for about two weeks, entering the summer season, there's a daily British air flight from London's Gatwick Airport to Bermuda, and then it returns from Bermuda to Gatwick. It's uh, popularly used by many in the reinsurance industry, and last night's flight from Gatwick to Bermuda was canceled because of a, quote, double mechanical issue on the plane. They also use a 777. All things are back to normal now, says BA. The annual rankings of the world's busiest airports have come out, and the busiest airport in the world is Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Uh, Beijing's airport is second, London's Heathrow is third, Tokyo's Narita is fourth, Chicago's O'Hare is fifth, Los Angeles International is sixth, Dubai International in the UAE is seventh, Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris is eight, Dallas-Fort Worth International in the U.S. is nine, and uh, Socorro Hatta International Airport in Jakarta, Indonesia is tenth. Interesting. Nowhere on that list is any of the New York airports. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.